to uh, license uh, two casinos on the Delaware Riverfront. Um, and two, so two years ago, um, those of us who started Casino Free and our supporters were um, told that there was nothing we could do to stop the casinos, that they were going to be built within six months, or at least that the construction would begin. Uh, and we resolved to uh, stop, stop them from being built. Uh, and that's our mission, is to stop casinos from being built in the city. Uh, so you know, we proved the politicians wrong. We proved. Uh, the media wrong because of citizen action. We're a grassroots organization. We're committed to nonviolent strategy. We do a lot of direct action campaigns, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but I want to tell you about two really important resources, uh, both uh, designed by JJ. Um, one is the L Little Casino Fact Book, uh, which we have hundreds of copies of. So please um, take one, distribute them to your friends. Uh, they are uh, small. They're little, but they're filled with facts. Um, that's why it's called the Casino Fact Book. And uh, I just think it's a great resource uh, because there's a lot to learn about casinos. Uh, I could talk about it for a long time, but I won't. Um, just really quickly so you guys know what's up with these things. Uh, in the fact book, you'll find a link to a PDF, and that PDF is, you can print out the fact book yourself, make it double-sided. If you know someone who works at a law firm or say a certain department of the University of Pennsylvania, which might have made 500 copies for us, um, uh, you can print out the double-sided PDF and you can do what we just did on Thursday and have a folding party. We had a couple beers with the white dog and we had 500 copies, five people, seven people eventually, and we just like folded, folded, folded. Everyone does one step, very easy, very fun. And then you can have these in your pockets. Just when someone's like, no, 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 we need, we need casinos because they're good. They're going to give us jobs. And we can say, oh, well, hold on. Did you know that the number of independent restaurants in Atlantic City dropped from 48 the year casinos opened to 16 in 1997? But in just four years of the casino's arrivals, one third of the city's retail businesses had closed. Wow. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you say it that fast and you've had too much coffee and you're slightly manic the way that I am, then maybe not. However, um, not only can you guys be taking these with you, there's a box them over there, everyone grab one or two when you leave. Um, I would totally encourage you to, there's a PDF of this on the website that you can email us people, it's listed in here. One that is foldable and one that is just straight readable for reading online without the upside down parts that go with the folding. Um, so I'd encourage you guys to not just take these with you out in the world, but to make lots more of them. Because the city has been sold on this idea that they're going to bring all these benefits uh, and they haven't actually thought about, okay, those promises are all well and good, but in this economy they can't keep them and no one's mentioned any of the costs, which is... Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, the great um, The other thing that we're going to, the other thing that we're releasing tonight was a great T-shirt that JJ designed. I'm wearing as well. Uh, we're selling them here tonight for the first time, uh, ten to fifty dollars, um, and all the proceeds go to Casino for Philadelphia. I also want to thank the musicians uh, and the people here for hosting uh, the event for us. Um, Woo! Uh, 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 uh
I've met Maisie or Paige, these are the housemates who live here too. I, I tend to do a lot of talking, but, but thank you. Very much. Thank you. And, um, so anyway, I think I'll be speaking a little bit later about how to get more involved, but we're you know, a growing movement. Please join up, join up and hear the questions. Sir. What is the current status of things? The current status of things. JJ, should I do that now or later? Um, why, don't you, why don't you give us the background of how we came to be here? Because I think X71 is something people don't know about. The referendum is something people don't know about. And then in between the next sets, we'll talk about where we are going to join it. Thank you. So four and a half years ago, uh, on July 4th weekend, the Pennsylvania State Legislature, uh, with uh, the great statesman, Senator Vincent Fumo, who's currently facing a 139 count a federal corruption trial, federal indictment trial nice. in Philadelphia. Yeah, nice. He's a, he, was the, he was the architect of the Slots Law. He, working with the governor, uh, the Supreme Court, and the legislature, uh, passed the Act 71, the Gaming Act, without any public discussion or debate. Um, it was then upheld about a year later by the Supreme Court. There's actually a, a case pending in federal court <coughs> brought forward by the um, League of Women Voters. Uh, who are claiming basically that there was this deal made that the Supreme Court, in exchange for a pay raise, would uphold the constitutionality of the Gaming Act. So that case is still pending. Um, and then, like I mentioned two years ago tonight, they made a decision about where, to, um, where they'd like to put the casinos in Philadelphia. Um, and about four months later, people may remember, Casino Free Philadelphia had collected over uh, 27, 25? 25. Thousand signatures um, in about a three-week period in February of 2007 to place a question on the ballot uh, in Philadelphia, which would have at least created a minimum standard uh, where if passed, um, casinos wouldn't be built within 1,500 feet of homes, parks, uh, schools, or places of worship. And about three weeks before that went to the voters, as question one, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, um, struck it off of the ballot, and for those of us that were in Philadelphia at the time, if you went into your into your voting booth, you saw this little sticker, a question one that said "removed by court order." So that was that was our work, not the removed part, but the putting it there, the thing that you couldn't see behind the sticker. Um, and we actually did a, a um, our own election, um, modeled on the Mississippi Freedom Party's election in 1968 where we actually did our own election called Philly's Ballot Box, where about 15,000 Philadelphians were given an opportunity to vote on the question, um, and 95% approved it, so that was cool. Uh, and we have ballot boxes like in, what, in every um, state representative's district and a number of voting locations. So we basically have advanced uh, basic standards. Uh, that was our sort of compromise position that casinos shouldn't be in neighborhoods. The more we've learned about the, the credit, what we call the predatory gambling trade, um, this, this sort of casino industry, although I think industry is too positive a term, um, the more we learn about it, the, the more we, we become more strongly opposed to the idea of having um, this trade in, um, in our city. We don't believe that it's a way to raise revenue uh, and all um, sort of evidence that we've looked at and the studies we've done uh, and the economists have done around the country definitely points to the fact that uh, hosting <coughs> casinos uh, will uh, you know, create a, a net loss of jobs, a net loss of overall revenue, um, and not to mention the, all the sort of negative harms that it brings in terms of social costs, um, gambling addiction, other addictions, foreclosures, suicide, crime. Um, and to me also a very fundamental, that's why our, our next campaign will be themed on sort of some founding documents like the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. And really casinos go at the heart of, um, or, uh, you know, they're very corrupt and they definitely, um, I think, challenge our democratic institutions as we're seeing, for example, with our, our mayor who actually ran on a platform opposing casinos in neighborhoods and he's now, um, you know, working in support of the Fox so this casino moving to our downtown to the gallery, which I'll talk about later. So that's a little bit of background. Uh, I want to get back to the music. <laughs> so, is there a, is there a uh, website so thank you, where people can find out more? What's that? Is there a website? There is a website. <laughs> thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> um, uh, www.casinofreefella.org. Uh, and you can sign up for our email list. You'll get plenty of emails. Uh, and we also have a lot of new uh, members of our organizing team. Uh, actually here tonight, Brendan, Amy, 
Um, JJ has been very active lately, and a number of other people. And we, you know, we're always looking for more people to step up and use their skills and talents towards the cause. And we're really good at, you know, taking lots of your time and, and being really friendly and nice about it. <laughs> Thank you.
first night. Um, I've been writing exams for Bryn Mawr College all week. I'm a little delirious. <laughs> I want my, uh, my third cappuccino of the day. And, um, yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. No, I actually used to work in a coffee shop the year after I graduated high school. We, uh, I was an opener, and the openers had this drink called the 0077A. <coughs> Seven shots of espresso over ice. <laughs> and after I quit that job, I went off caffeine for six months. <laughs> but um, just a couple more days. I did myself the dubious favor of getting some extensions, so the semester continues. But um, this next song is called Tell Me, and uh, it's a song about excesses. and. Uh, Losing control. And uh, yeah, I have to like this one too. Anyone with young children that are at the, the sort of, you know, six or seven year old phase will probably appreciate this more than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> at least the first one. <laughs> or the second, I should say.
Um, yeah, so it's been a busy, busy fall for me. I'm, uh, I'm trying to graduate early from Bryn Mawr. Uh, yes, there's a couple, couple alumni around that know what that's all about. Um, and I've, I've just been, music's been like really great this fall, which is wonderful. I, um, I did this competition up in New York in November uh, called the New York Songwriter Circle competition. And uh, they uh, sent me away with second place, which is great. I mean, I did that song. <laughs> I can't quite figure out how to frame this yet. Like, second, you know? But it was, it was great. I was really happy. We're 4,000 contestants. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Philly Inquirer actually printed an article about it, and they had the most wonderful typo. They, they said that it was 40,000. <laughs> which is wonderful. I was really happy about that. <laughs> I think it's Miss Prince Go. It's pretty great. But, um, yeah, no, it was wonderful, and, and I've gotten a lot of attention from it, which has been fantastic. Um, but I'm going to play you my little little prize winner. It's called Silk and String, and um, uh, I wrote it uh, about a guy I met at a gas station once when I got stuck there for like three hours waiting for a ride. Um, and uh, this is how it all went down. So, Silk and String.
I think I can I can feel the caffeine. <laughs> <laughs>
some of you have heard him at previous house concerts. It's actually where we met. And uh, we did a grand old tour of the southeastern United States. And um, that was great because I got to go to New Orleans for the first time. Woo! And, uh, yes. Been back this fall. It was wonderful. Um, well, sort of wonderful. It's also really sad, but um, really great folks there. Um, it's amazing that there's still, you know, we were talking to some people, not even in, in the part of town that got really badly hit, and they said that they just got a phone like three months ago in June and still don't get mail. <laughs> and you think about how long ago Hurricane Katrina was, and it's just sort of astounding. But um, I bring this up because this next song, Sweet Metallic, was uh, written in part um, about New Orleans and the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Um, it's actually about a lot of other things as well. It's sort of, I uh, lumped all of my general complaints and gripes about this country <laughs> into one song, <laughs> which, uh, which was ambitious to be sure. But um, <clears throat> there's a couple of stories in this. Uh, one of them is that uh, the year after I graduated high school, I worked as a nanny for a family whose father was an officer in Iraq. And um, got this really intimate perspective in, into the, how that sort of affects family dynamics. Uh, I, I first started thinking about this song then and didn't write it because I, I didn't quite have the whole picture yet. Um, and then sort of over the years, you know, I was in high school when um, the Twin Towers were hit and I sort of watched as I was becoming politically involved, I sort of also was getting really freaked out by this culture of fear politics and sort of this manic patriotism that <laughs> was happening in the U.S. And, um, so that was the second time I thought about this song. And, uh, and then when I finally actually sat down to write it after um, after Hurricane Katrina, um, I read an article in the New York Times talking about how the media coverage uh, had brought to surface uh, latent racial tensions in the U.S. back to the national spotlight. And uh, the article cited a similar flood in 1927. Uh, Mississippi flooded and rescue boats went out to save people and one of the steamships deliberately abandoned the whole group of African Americans. And uh, they didn't just leave these people to die. Um, as they were abandoning them, they sang this hit song of the day, Bye Bye Blackbird, mm -hmm. off the, uh, the edges of the ship. And they were on riots afterwards. And, um, it's just sort of a, a terrible little moment in American history. And, and I just think that sometimes it's important to, uh, to look at those, uh, even amidst all this encouraging change and wonderful hopes for the future. Um, I don't think you can really move forward unless you take a look at some of the more uncomfortable pieces of our collective history. So, this is Sweet Metallic. <laughs> Beer tastes like rust sucked in softer milk, sweet metallic. You can't spit out, we just can't plan for this kind of thing. But
some room right in the front if you are bold. Uh, there's a little pretty blue cushion here. Um, you all still with me? That's too tired. Not pressing anyone out. <laughs>
Turns off from the classical Like the ones burning in Catacombs below Paris And pray for her by the name of Tamlin, who uh, is in captured, uh, enslaved uh, to the queen of the fairies, Queen Mab. And uh, he sort of works in her force collecting uh, fees from trespassers, usually the virginity of these young maidens. Um, one of these young maidens is, is Janet, who becomes his lover. And um, <coughs> Tamlin's afraid that he's going to be sacrificed at Halloween, because that's sort of what happens in this world. And uh, he asks his lover, Janet, to save him. And the way that she's to do this is to um, identify him by his white steed and uh, pull him off of his horse during the fairy parade at Halloween and hang on to him while he's turned into all sorts of terrifying creatures, a lion and a serpent. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, a red-hot burning coal that she has to hang on to. Yeah, ouch, yeah, right? <laughs> and, uh, and then she has to you know, like throw him in a well, cover him with a cloak, and, and, then, and then he's hers, and the spell is broken, and she can take him home. And uh, I, uh, I was revisiting this story about the same time that uh, someone I cared a lot about um, was kind of self-destructing. And uh, it got me thinking again about the tale and uh, sort of imagining a modern version of, of Janet. Um, and it always seemed to me that this story was much more about her. She played much more active role in it than Tamlin did. So I wrote this from her perspective, or a Janet-like person. Um, and, uh, regardless of whether you're not you're into Celtic mythology, <laughs> uh, I hope this song still has something for you. Uh, I think if you've ever gone to a party and felt really awkward in that place, you'll get something from it. <laughs> and uh, also, if you've ever cared about someone who wasn't taking very good care of yourself, I think you'll hopefully have something to get out of this song. But if you do geek out on Celtic mythology, by all means, Google Tamlin and uh, lay the, the story by the lyrics and pick up all the fun overlaps. It's a good thing to do for those who are so inclined. <coughs> so, Tamlin. Party with its posh freaks and so 
it's a, it's a ladies' night. Block. She's two yeah. blocks away right now. I know, it's amazing. She's just sitting at a state desk concert. Anyway, we're going to be together, uh, I think, starting at 10 o'clock. And then, if you're interested, you can come see that. So. <clears throat>
Hey, y'all back there. Um, so just to remind you guys why we're here, um, hearing Gillian's song right before this one, Tamlin, uh, talking about people and self-destruction, um, hits a point for me just because uh, very recently there's a friend who couldn't be here and I'm not an emotional person and I'm getting all a little bit too much. So a uh, good friend of mine had serious issues with alcoholism and uh, he had to leave town because his life kind of fell apart with it. Um, and the idea that these places are going to be put on the gallery in the heart of the city that is right where any person who's vulnerable and they're going to have a 24-7 liquor license and so you hear about what casinos can do to people's families and seeing firsthand what addiction does to people's lives. The fact that they're going to be right there on the SEPTA hub where anyone in the city can get into them um, is just bad news for our town. And we're closing libraries and we're opening up casinos and it makes no fucking sense. So I need two volunteers back here. Uh, one of you guys is going to cut some bread. And one of you guys is going to open up a little fridge and restock all the cheese. Um, <laughs> <laughs> while that's happening, everyone is going to want to go, and there's going to be more beer and more cheese and more, more tasty baked goods. Um, by the way, uh, Sheila over there brought us a huge uh, tray of amazing brownies that were supposed to go to the punk, uh, punk rock flea market that got canceled today. Um, and uh, so, so he's starting up a little business doing uh, doing mail order baked goods. And if you like the tasty things there and you're doing, looking for a last minute uh, present, take them out. But before you go rushing to all the good stuff, every single person here is going to want to go that way. I want all of you, before you do that, to walk here and grab two of these things and shove them in your pockets. Every single one of you. Make sure you get two of these guys and shove them in your pockets. Here they are, we made 500 of them the last night. Take a couple. These are copies of the little casino fact book that we made just for you, for those of you guys who are getting here late. Um, guys, one more second, please. Um, so, take this home and read it next time you're sitting on the toilet. It's kind of fine print, but find out a little bit about what these casinos have done to other cities, which is why we're here. Um, other quick thing, is Quan still here? I see, maybe he thought he walked up the door. He's on the porch. He's on the porch, okay, for a second. Um, so, uh, um, Beth, who's here, and Quan, who's out front, uh, working on a great little shop on 48th Street, and doing a little script for you guys. They made uh, these beautiful, beautiful shirts for us. Aren't they pretty? Um, so, there's a couple around the room here, but there's also like 200 up in my office. So, Amy right here is going to coordinate if anybody wants to buy any of these shirts. The proceeds will go to Casino Free Philadelphia. Um, so, talk to Amy. So, let's make sure that everyone here gets a couple of these. Please pass them around, take them with you. You can download the PDF from the internet, and from there, you can hold your own folding parties and make a couple hundred uh, over happy hour the way we just did on Thursday. So, please take these and pass them around a little bit. Um, please do, thank you. Um, so we're going to take a little bathroom break.